Is your art a reflection of, of people, time and place, the people you have known, the places you've been, what you've learned? Yeah. I mean, I just buy it, you know? It's on sale. It's cheap. Of your art, will you, at the end of your life, have a manifesto, or is your life a constant series of revisions, never to be completed, never to be finalized, never to be manifest? Yeah. F's dream since childhood was to become a tribal chief in a small Polynesian island. When it discovered though that it would null and void his union membership, F decided on another occupation, eventually becoming a postal worker. On F's postal route, it always places letters in people's letterbox in order of size, with large at the back and small at the top. No one really notices F's precision in doing this. Article Collective reporting for duties. Ha! Arts on the double, over and out of control. The gift that keeps giving. It's the art scene machine that knows exactly where it's at and shows you exactly how it's done. Another week and you guessed it, another art bomb. Let loose on you, humble peeps. Here it is. Poetry, spoken word. Words spoken and words were written. Versus freeform, iambic pentameter, haiku dreaming, boy. Words are taking over funky bars and pubs across Melbourne in an explosion of rhythm, rhyme, allegory, and assonance. Love, rage, pain, breakfast, supermarkets, hardware, peaches, gumboots, cane toads, world peace. Pop those puppies in a blender, you got poetry on a plate. Bird's eye view under the arty cool microscope. Hey. And now you lucky charms get to play the part of Fly on the Wall at an article collective, members only. Open discourse, poetry jam. So sit back, sip at a long mac, and dig this poetic attack. Compliments of the article collective. 
drinks. Yeah, yeah, po- yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's incredible. You know, I think you can't you can't learn poetry. Mm. Uh, poetry is everything. It's everywhere. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. That is ex- that is one hundred percent right. Exactly. I mean, I've actually been writing uh, poetry unconsciously for about as long as I can remember. <laughs> Even that memory that you, know, you shared with us then, did that manifest itself in words? Think about it. Mm. Yes. Yes. Wow. The end. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did you get it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, maybe just for just for the audience, we should just you know right. let them in on that on that hypothesis. Maybe explain it a little bit, just about. Sure. Well, the thing is, you can't do anything without creating poetry. Nothing I do does not embody some sort of rhythm or verse or heterometric literary experience. I mean, look at this. Well, this. Mmm. Mm. Brent, tell me, what did you do when you woke up this morning? Oh, uh, well, I guess I turned off my alarm and went to the toilet. And then I bet you had breakfast, yeah? Um, yes, 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 I did. That's exactly the point I'm trying mm. to manifest. Mm. We are all poets, okay? All right, yeah. The post 9-11 world, it is impossible to avoid poetry. Yes. Yeah, another thing that has changed uh, is the status of poetry. Um, whereas it used to be uh, the domain of the misunderstood, freakish, loner teenager. I mean, right now, poetry is so hot right now. Yeah, right. And you know something yeah. else that is so sad? You know, when something like this, like poetry, becomes so trendy and you just get this pretentious, talentless wankers, you know, and they just destroy it for the true believers. Ah, I so know what you mean by that, KL. I have made the decision uh, to stop reading my work publicly and also to stop it from being published in the traditional sense. Uh, to ensure that my work is only consumed, for want of, of a better word, by those who truly appreciate it, I am recording my new poetry into cassette tapes, which I deliberately chose as a reaction to the modern podization yeah, of sound, and I'll subversively label these tapes uh, incorrectly, deliberate incorrections, uh, with titles such as uh, Shut Up Your Face by Joe Dolce. Um, and I'll be distributing those in recycling bins in Melbourne's inner eastern suburbs. That's genius. Big up, Scar! Mm. In this piece, I've used a uh, text with already um, ingrained meaning. Donna Hay, uh, it's a kitchen classic. And um, what I'm doing is I've attempted to use it to derive um, something new, something equally as meaningful, special and amazing. So would you like to hear that, guys? Terrific, yeah. Please. Let's go right here. It's called, um, it's called Microwave on Haiku. I love the simplicity of soup. 1.5 kilos of chicken buns. Give me a big plate of salad any day. One egg. One tablespoon of lemon juice. There's nothing more likely to make someone smile. Basic shortcut pastry. Bravo. Reconceptualized verse. Such a timely comment on the international response to world poverty. Eat your heart out, hey? <laughs> we'll now feast on this. I should point out before I begin this work that this piece is utterly experimental, political, and controversial. Hey, fat American. Do your cheeseburgers keep you warm at night? Do your fries give you positive reinforcement? Or do they live vicariously through your shake? Hey, fat American. Why don't you give your pizza to the poor people? Why don't you save a baby with a pepperoni? Double cheese, double anchovy. Oh, you kill me. Hey, fat American, why don't you eat the Statue of Liberty? Why don't you douse it in ketchup and mustard and eat it for dinner? Or eat it for a snack, because you probably eat that much for a snack. And you could probably eat two Statues of Liberty for a snack and still have room for the Empire State Building. Couldn't you, fat American? Oh, fat American, you are... Fat. Bless it. Every time. Every time.
bumped into Videl Sassoon. He said, show me his hair. I said, take a look at that. Does he only wear green? Yes. Oh, how's it? I'm Carl, 681540R. I'm straight out of Joburg, South Africa, where the men are hot and known for taking hearts for ransom. And then only releasing the hostages once their demands have been met. And they demand love. Anyway, I'm one of those guys. South African and hot and in the hunt for love. Will you be the girl to give in to my demands? What? No, that's not a stick of dynamite in my pants. <laughs> Hey, who's to say it's not going to blow? Anyway, you want some thinking music courtesy of one of my love songs? Hey, why not put it together with one of my music videos that I crafted especially for you? So here goes something. Right, thank you all for coming down tonight. Okay, let's kick it. Let's get it started. Yeah. Jump. Yeah, yeah. Three, two, one. One is the loneliest number that you'll ever know. And I know because I've been there. And you'll know because you know why I know what I don't know. That's why. Come on now, it's a natural heart. Come on, I'm a natural guy. And that's why you'll find that you're the apple of my eye. And you're the pie in the sky. And you've got the X, Y, Z. So now you know my ABCs. So why don't you come and play with me? The game is Jenga. Look out when you're replacing the blocks to the top of my car so you don't tip me right over. So which is it gonna be? You good which or a bad which? Alright, I've said too much, I'm sorry. And I apologize for the profusely profound foundation that I might have left or as I corrected in the minds and hearts of the millions of women who I've tried to touch and I've tried to teach the ways of the man. You're divine, I'll keep you in mind, girl. Nah, that's not the way it goes, right? Well, fly me a contract over and I'll sign it by the night. Rewind, take two. Man from Joburg walks down the street. Sweet slab, his position is swagger in the feet. He's got a swollen heart under his flannelette shirt and it hurts. Yeah, put it down to moral hygiene. Yeah, put it down to social circumstance. Yeah, just put it down. Yeah, just put it down. Stop. Bass string. Heart string. Heartbreak. 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 Yeah, fake it. Yeah, fake it again and I won't mind. Yeah, fake it again and it really satisfies. Yes, yeah, Snickers, yes, yeah, Snicker, yes, yeah, Snicker at me. She rolled into town without a second to lose an advertisement for love, a billboard across the palm of her hand. But she didn't care about the wall she'd broken down. Now she didn't care about the wall she had broken down. Now she didn't care about the people she left in jail. Heart slaves. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Feel like I want to exchange numbers. Okay. We're playing for time zone tickets or what? We're playing for time zoners? Yes! One ticket. Oh! Yeah, good pass. Oh, I should have gone in. Gonna get a scholarship. Gonna get a, get a scholarship to like Melbourne Uni basketball squad. Yeah, it's gonna happen. This guy can't even shoot. We can't even catch. Stop him, man. Play, He's play, a dude. This this guy. Heat the camera on number one. Number one. Oh. Just trying to stay out of juvie. Just... Yes. He's my mate. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Just show what I can do. I'm trying to get a scholarship, man. Don't blow this for me. Oh, Jordan. That was Jordan. It didn't go in, but it was close. On the buzzer! That was a swish. That was a swish. Did you see it? I bought these on eBay. New York style. Yeah. 
New York Shut star. up, man. Shut up. He's an idiot. Come play one on one. I'll show him how good I am. Right. Watch this. I'll take this guy so easy. Watch this. Yes. Oh, this bullshit. Yes, free throw in the act of shooting. In the act of shooting. That was what? a real funny guy. Yes. Number one. Number one. That's three time zone tickets. Whatever, man. Three time zone tickets, loser. Well guys, Indonesia's been in the news a bit lately, and once again it's for all the wrong reasons. They got some really great surfing over there, but they can sure come down hard on you if they catch you with a little bit of weed. So Jace, what do you reckon? Are Indonesians just a bunch of pricks? <laughs> nah, Dave, not at all. I'm not a big fan of what they did to Chappelle Corby, but overall I find the Indonesians to be a beautiful bunch of people. Really warm, really generous, really friendly. Oh, so have you been over to Indo? Or? Yeah, mate, I went over there a few years back to help after the bombings. To help out, eh? Had no idea you were such a philanthropist. Ha! Fallen over pissed more like it. <laughs> Turn it up, guys. When I went over there, it had a really profound effect on me. All those beautiful people with bloody great big hearts, their livelihood was gone. They didn't know what to do. It was complete devastation. Pretty heavy stuff. So I thought to myself, what can I do to help? How can I get their economy going again? Now, I've never paid for sex before in my life. But I went through about two or three Balinese prostitutes a day uh, to pay them 10 or $15 and then add in another $5 tip on top of that. Uh, it was good for me, obviously. It was good for the girls and their families and I was helping stimulate the local economy. Oh, sounds like the economy wasn't the only thing that was stimulated. <laughs> Turn it up, mate. Seriously. Being an Aussie is about a few things. Number one is mateship and helping other people's out. I mean, I don't think I could really call myself an Aussie if I wasn't there doing my bit for those people. Mate, you are a bloody Anzac, you really are. And I reckon I'm going to have to go out the window pretty soon and do my bit. What do you reckon, Brett? Oh, you can count me in, mate. I tell you what, I don't mind the Asian girls. You can say I've got to dose the yellow fever. <laughs> 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 and you know, while I'm at it, you know the Balinese, they've got the beer called the Bing Tang. Yeah, mate, I went you know through a one? fair bit of that. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm not so interested in the Balinese Bing Tang as so much the Balinese Poon Tang. Ow! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Get him out of here. Oh, he's Get done it again. He has done it again. <laughs> C has been in a witness protection program for about five years. It witnessed a brutal murder and its evidence helped to put away a crooked cop. At first C found its new life hard, but eventually it took up frisbee golf to pass the time. In fact, C became so good that it recently competed in the World Championships of Frisbee Golf in San Francisco, eventually finishing a very credible eighth place and winning a pewter goblet and a certificate of participation. Have I ever told you, Carol? You're my best friend. My best friend. Yeah. You're all the world. Mm. Drink your drink. Finish your drink. There's plenty to go, you old fool. You're the only one who understands me. Here, put these on. That'd be funny. You try them on? Uh, they don't fit, you funny thing. But you, you are a wonderful friend. A very funny friend. You have told me about. Do you remember the time we were sailing and uh, where we'd hired that captain and neither of us liked him, he was so obnoxious. Don't spill your drink. You're drunk, you fool. And when we, we beat the captain with the oars and we, we push him overboard, no one ever knew. Isn't that funny? <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's very funny. You're a very funny friend. 
I've always, I've always loved you. As a close friend. What did you put in this? Freak! You put something in this. I have you. Oh, 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 Carol, Jesus. Carol. Oh, Carol, I always swore I wouldn't go like Harry Baggett. Carol, the phone, the f Carol. Oh. Carol. Carol, I'm okay. You know how things get stuck in there. You know what? Growing up can be tough. Believe me, I've done it too. And growing up on the mean courts of Bebo land is no exception. The lows, the highs, the lows, the middle to low. But if you hold on to your dream and your aim is true, well, the rest, the rest is nothing but then. Until next time. Really perfectly, didn't it? It was amazing. Yeah.